All right, I'm going to tell you a story about a time I got really, really angry and made out with a girl on the beach. And I want to use this video as a little bit of an experiment because mostly my content is about giving you guys advice. You know, you're listening to my thoughts, you know, I'm sharing my values. But today I want to try something a little bit different. I don't want to give you my interpretations. I want to see what it's like if I just tell you the story as it happened, just raw data, and then leave it for you guys to make up your own interpretations. I think this is gonna be hard for me because the story I'm about to tell you contains really poignant lessons, really fascinating insights into the differences between men and women and how that dynamic can play out in a charged romantic and sexual context. But I wanna see how this goes. I wanna experiment, just be hands off, let you guys reach your own conclusions. All right, I wanna take you back to 2009. So this is the year before I met my current partner who I'm still with. And so as you listen to this story, please be kind in your interpretations. Remember, I was still very much a young man trying to discover the world, trying to discover myself. Okay, so me and my buddy, we decided to travel up to the far northeast of Australia to go spend some time in the rainforest. We wanted to do a bit of a nature tour. So we got this van, like we were driving around, we were sleeping in it. It was awesome. We checked out waterfalls, jungles. We went out to the Great Barrier Reef. It was a really good holiday. We were also young guys and we had been learning through the internet about pickup artist culture. And that was like revelatory for me. Like I thought you could only really date girls that you'd been friends with. But then there's this community of guys that's like, no, no, you can just go up to women on the street or just like randomly approach them and like run game. Like we've got all these techniques to generate attraction and you can meet women anywhere you go. And to me, that was like, whoa, awesome. This is going to change my dating life. I'm going to meet so many more women. So I loved it. I found the whole concept liberating and it just did wonders for my confidence, my developing social skills. So I was very, very grateful. And when we flew into Cairns, that was kind of our hub, we discovered that it was like backpacker central. Like there were women from all over the world, South and North America, Africa, Asia, Europe, everybody wanted to come see the Great Barrier Reef and spend time in the rainforest. And so the town was just filled with like hot young female backpackers. I still recommend this actually. Any guys who are interested in practicing their pickup skills, they've got to find like a tourist hub like this with people who are on holiday, just chilled out. To us, it was absolute paradise. Just all these like young girls in bikinis, like hanging out, happy to meet people, happy to be social. Awesome. I was single at that time. And even though meeting women wasn't the reason why we had decided to go on the trip, it was definitely a nice bonus. Anyway, I had struck up a conversation with this nice German girl and she was super receptive of my energy. You know, when you're flirting with a girl and you can just tell like she's thrilled that someone's flirting with her. That was the dynamic from the start. I did later find out that one of the reasons why she was so excited that I was talking to her is that she had come to Australia with two of her friends from Germany and they were both being really boring and she was just sick of their company. And so <laughs> she was just happy to be meeting new people. But at the time, I just thought she was really into me. And so, you know, I did my pickup artist stuff. I got her phone number and we were texting. We we're going to meet up sometime. So we made this plan to meet up with her and her friends at this beach a couple of hours south of Cairns. And as soon as we got there, as soon as I saw her, she was just like thrilled to see me and it was on. We went off to the beach and, you know, we were kissing. It was actually, we had to stop because yeah, we were like 20 and our breath was just awful, you know, just young, not paying attention to our hygiene. Like her breath was ghastly. She said mine was awful. So we just laughed about it. We went away, we brushed our teeth. Then we met up again and then, you know, restarted. Oh man. <laughs> I don't even think we had access to showers. We were just sleeping in the van. So like we were just washing in the beach or like the beautiful, like freshwater streams that you find in the rainforest. Our hygiene was not good. If anything, I actually think I was probably lucky that her breath was awful too. So it wasn't just me. Anyway, the vibe was fun and we we're having like a really good time. And I thought we were going to have a really nice evening together. But even though her and I were hitting it off, her two German friends didn't want to stay there. They changed their mind. They were bored. They were restless. And, you know, all the girls had to stay together. And so like, nah, we don't want to stay here. We're moving on. We're going somewhere else. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, you know, that, that sucks. That really messes with my plans. But the girl that I was with was like, no, 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 come with us. Even though she was really friendly with her suggestion, right, really open and inviting, I was worried about that dynamic because you know, we had driven there, me and my buddy, specifically to meet up with this girl. Like, we had followed her there. 
the idea of getting there and then just being like, oh yeah, we actually have no interest in staying at this place. It's all about you. So wherever you go to next, we're going to follow. I was worried wouldn't look good in terms of like a frame kind of thing. Like, oh, well, I'm just some puppy dog, just sort of, you know, chasing her around. So I didn't really know what decision to make, but I talked about it with my buddy. He was like, look, your girl's being really friendly, really inviting. I don't think it's a big deal. Like, let's just go. Maybe the next place will be even cooler. So we're like, all right, yep. Awesome. So we'll follow you. And so we left that beach and we went into the local town to get supplies, you know, stuff for dinner. And I remember my buddy kept our van and the two girls, her two friends went with him and I jumped into her van and she was driving. I was hoping I'd made the right decision, but as soon as I got into the van and we started driving, I thought I've made a huge mistake because the vibe was awful. I was trying to make conversation with her. I was like making jokes and she was just like staring at the road, completely silent. It was just awful. God, it is really hard to not tell you all my ideas and my theories about why that had changed to not give you guys my interpretation. But I want to, I want to stick to this experiment. Just give you the facts. Once we reached the supermarket, the vibe was just even worse. Like I was still trying to chat to her, be kind of friendly. You know, we had been kissing like an hour earlier, but she was like all business. Just like she had her shopping list was up and down the aisles, not talking, not looking around. I felt ignored and Actually, at this point, I just started getting pissed off. I was like, this fucking sucks. Like, I would have preferred to stay at that other beach. That other campsite was awesome. So I was like, this is this is a bust. This is not going anywhere. I went to find my buddy and I was like, hey, man, I think we need to ditch these girls. Let's just go do our own thing. Like, let's stay here in the town tonight or find somewhere different. I don't want to keep following them around. My girl's not paying me any attention. Luckily, my buddy was the really relaxed, like chilled out kind of guy. He was like, yeah, man, whatever you want. He didn't really care. He's such a great guy. I'm actually still good friends with him. He came and stayed with me for three nights just last week. Anyway, since my buddy was fine with it, we were just going to go do our own thing. I went to find my girl to tell her. I was like, hey, like, we're bailing. We're going to go do our own thing. I didn't think she'd care because she just basically hadn't paid any attention to me for like 45 minutes. So I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. But the moment that I said, we're not going to follow you to the next place. We're just going to go do our own thing. Her mood changed instantly. She just like turned and faced me like eye contact, like, no, please. No, oh, it'd be so good. Come with us. I was really shocked. I was really taken aback. I was not expecting her to even care remotely. And then suddenly she's like, begging me to to stay with her. So I was like, geez, well, okay, this is new information. But I actually just stuck to my guns initially. I said, nah, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I don't want to. I think at that stage, I just started to develop like a bit of a headache. My mood was off. I was pissed off with how she was sort of treating me. So I was like, nah, I'm done with this whole thing. I, I don't want to do anything. So I just apologized to her. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. But she begged again, like really sincerely, like, no, 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 I'm so sorry. Like, please, please, you know, come with us. And like, I was like, well, okay, maybe I've met, read this wrong. Like maybe she wasn't being rude. Maybe I, I just was taking it personally and I didn't need to or whatever. So I doubted myself. I was like, okay, maybe this evening is salvageable. So even though I had a headache, I thought that my mood could improve if she kept interacting with me in this like really positive way that she was now. <sighs> So I flip-flopped again. I changed my mind. I was like, okay, all right, let's go. Like, uh, but I'm going to drive with my buddy, you know, like I don't want to drive with you. I didn't enjoy that van ride. You didn't chat to me. So I kind of, you know, put my, my flag in the ground. I'm, I'm making my stand. I want to spend time with my friend. And she's like, yep, yep, that, that's fine. We're going to this place. Just follow us there. So I was like, all right. So we got our supplies. We bought all of our food for dinner. And, uh, and then we took off. And so we go to this other beach a little bit further south and it has this campsite there. And as we drive into the campgrounds, we are following the girls. So we're behind them in our van and their van stops. And it's because this other van going the other direction had stopped too. And it's these guys in the front seat and they're chatting to the girls and the girls are chatting back. And they kept chatting for ages, like minutes and minutes and minutes while we're sitting there waiting behind them. And instantly my bad mood just like took off to an insane degree. I was like, man, fuck this, you know, like <laughs> everything's so, so dramatic when you're young, you know, I was like, ah, oh, this is stupid. I don't want to put up with this. You know, I'm not waiting. And so I was driving and I was just so pissed off at the whole thing that I just 
swerved like up on the curb and like drove around the girls and then just drove off. I just left them there. Even though the plan was we're going to follow them, I was like, no, nope, I'm not interested anymore. We're doing our own thing. And so we left the campground and then we parked on like a couple of streets up just by the beach. And I was like, right, I'm getting them out of my mind. And we just sat down there. We enjoyed the sunset. We started cooking dinner. At this stage, my headache was really bad too. It's just like pounding. I didn't have any pain relief you know, pills or anything. But at least I thought that I'd gotten some of my inner peace back because we're just having good conversation. I was enjoying spending time with my buddy. I'd forgotten about the girls and we're just like cleaning up, you know? But then who should rock up? You know, this is like an hour and a half later. The girls just sort of have found us and they stroll into our camp and just start sitting around. One of them sat on my chair and started talking to us as though nothing had happened. I didn't know what to make of that. At this stage, I really didn't want to spend time with them. Like I was like nuts. I'm done with you girls. Like, I, I don't know what this dynamic is. But it was, you know, do you be rude? Do you kick them out? Like, do I really have something solid to point to, to be like, no, I don't want to spend time with you. It was kind of remarkable, I think, to me that they had left their campground because they didn't know where I'd gone. Like, they'd obviously put in some effort to go and seek us out. And I thought, well, that at least plays somewhat positively in our frame and that they're the ones chasing us. That seemed an improvement from what felt like like a humiliating dynamic before where it was just me like chasing her around like a puppy dog. Like I wanted to reclaim some of my dignity. So anyway, when the girls turn up, my buddy was being like a good host. He was being really friendly, you know, talking to them. But I, I just didn't say anything. I was pissed off. I was angry. I had my headache. I just couldn't be bothered making any kind of conversation with them whatsoever. So I remember we were sitting on like these wooden pylon, pylons, like looking at the beach, the sun had set. So it's basically just dark now. And I remember the girls all chatting to my friend and he's chatting back where I just sort of sat there like brooding, <laughs> you know, that feeling when you're in a bad mood and just everyone seems dumb and everything just seems annoying. I'm probably quite lucky that it was dark and so nobody could see my face because I'm sure I had like a rotten expression. So the girl that I had been with earlier was sitting next to me, but neither of us were really saying anything because I know on my end, I just didn't feel like I had that much invested. You know, I had a pretty bad headache. I would have quite happily just gone to bed. And so after like 20 minutes of listening to her friends, like go on and on, I'd had enough. I was like, no, I'm done with this. I just stood up and I said to the girl, I'm going down to the beach. Come with me. I didn't say anything as we walked down to the beach. As soon as I got onto the sand, I just sat down. I pulled her down with me and then we just started making out. The reality was that at that stage of the night, that's all I wanted to do. I was a young guy. I've got my hormones, you know, I was very attracted to the girl physically. And so I'm like, right, if I can't do this, I'm going to bed. Nothing else, you know, this evening interests me. I did feel a little bit bad about leaving my buddy, you know, by himself, but he was fine. He ended up making out with one of the other girls. Anyway, at the end of the night, we said our goodbyes. Uh, the girls were going to take off early. They were going somewhere else. And so that was the end of that. And the next morning when we were making our breakfast, who should rock up to our camp? But these three German guys who were apparently the ones in the van talking to the girls the night before. It seemed that they had had some kind of pre-existing relationship with these girls, which is why they'd you know, been talking to them and they were expecting to spend the evening with those girls and had spent a bunch of time wandering around the campgrounds trying to find them until they'd heard their voices at a distance and realized that the girls had gone over to spend time with us. The energy that they brought wasn't competitive like you might expect it to be. They didn't seem remotely angry with us. They were actually really friendly, which was a nice surprise. But they wanted to talk about the girls and like meeting girls and being backpackers and stuff like that. So we actually shared some stories and had a pretty good morning with them. Anyway, that's my story. It's very simple. You know, it's very short, but it actually taught me a lot in my formative years about female nature, because even though I wasn't trying to like be the master seducer and pull the perfect moves. It turns out I made the right choices at every moment. It's just that I was making them because I was in like an immature, pissed off mood and I had a headache. But I don't want to say any more. I don't want to get too much into my interpretations because I am curious to know if this experiment works or if it's something that you guys appreciate. So that's it. That's the raw story. And I leave it now to you guys in the comment section or just in the privacy of your own mind to reflect on what lessons you can draw from that experience. But of course, ultimately, I can't really resist giving my interpretations. I love what I do. I love my work. And so I am going to create a video explaining all the lessons that I took and all of those dynamics and why everything unfolded the way that it did. But I'm going to post that video on my Patreon. By the time you're watching this, it should already have been posted. So 
If you're interested in knowing the lessons that I took, if you want to hear my thoughts about that story and maybe compare it to your own conclusions, head over to my Patreon. Also, a reminder, if you ever need advice, hit me up on Hey Hero, tell me what's going on for you, and I create a personalized video just for you. And if you liked that story and it appeals to you the idea of learning your lessons about female psychology directly lifted from real stories, then you're going to love my paid course, 100 Sides of Women, because that features 10 real stories where you actually learn to psychologically diagnose the reasons why people are making decisions and then give advice as to what they could have done better. There's a hundred questions in it. It's tremendous value for money. There's a link down below to the video that explains the whole thing. People who have bought it have loved it. The reviews are so positive. And in case anyone's wondering what happened with that girl, if I ever met up with her again, yeah, I did, but there's actually not much of a story there. When I met up with her again, it was because she was really enthusiastically texting me. But when I got there, she was kind of distant again and I, I just didn't have the patience for it like I was just like nope I'm not interested we had like an awkward date I suppose you could say it and then I was like nah I'm done with this I really don't miss the dating market my compassion for all you single guys out there who still have to deal with stuff like that hopefully my videos are proving to be a useful resource to get you out of the dating market and into a relationship with a high quality woman